Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our clean, compact, and tileable blueprint design series meant for the early game using the Mark 1 blueprint designer. Today we're going over constructors. We're going to do a 4x version and an 8x version. The 8x gets a little bit insane, but it's pretty awesome when you have the ability to plop down 8 constructors without any work. Now the smelter's blueprint, I know I mentioned a 12x, it doesn't quite work in the Mark 1. You can do a 10x smelter design where they face each other and use mergers, but personally I prefer just chaining the 6x's together. They're quite skinny and you don't save that much room by using a, a, you know, a version where the smelters face each other. But constructors, you do gain some space from doing that, so we'll go over both versions. So starting with the 4X for constructors, we'll go ahead and clear our blueprint designer. And as usual, we'll make it from scratch so you can see all the steps. I'm gonna make it uh, a little bit off to the side here so that we can fit in the other four later. So we're gonna go all the way to the edge. I am gonna, um, I guess it doesn't really matter which way we're facing because the 4X version is going to be different than the 8X. So we'll build it near the back with just enough space for a conveyor lift behind it and enough space for the other constructor and a conveyor lift behind that one later. So to start out, to do your four constructors as usual, you'll place them in a line. And then we're going to get our belt poles similar to our uh, smelter design, we're going to line it up with the back of the shroud, and on this one, both can go to a height of three. I also want to point out, it's pretty easy in these blueprints to make small modifications if you would prefer something a little different. For example, if you want the input and the output to be stacked on top of each other, if you want that to be going in and the output to be coming out up here, you can do that. You can do the output belt above the input belt, and then you would still use the same strategy that we're going to use for linking the conveyor lifts with mergers on that second belt. So really, it's up to you. Uh, I personally like, you know, having shorter belts where possible. So we're going to do the inputs directly above the back and we'll do the output belt directly above the front. And that way we don't need extra belt segments between the two. Uh, but again, that's totally up to you whether you want to do that or not. And just like in our smelter blueprint, once we've got our our output belt going over there, we just set up the lifts, and then that should allow us to snap our mergers. I guess I'm doing mergers first instead of splitters first. And we grab those four, then we deconstruct. And the main difference with constructors is going to be with the power poles. Uh, those don't work out as nicely as with the smelters, but we'll, we'll get to that. So again, we're placing the lifts just so that we can get a snap point on the belt, which I can't seem to see very well from down here. I guess we gotta come from this angle. And so having that snap point on... Now, this one might have worked. You know what? Now that I think about it, some of these work without needing to build it because, yeah, see, they're snapping to the merger across from it. So sometimes you don't actually need to build the dummy lifts for the snap points. Um, but either way works. And again, you're listening for that click right there. That means the lift is uh, connected directly to the splitter or merger and you don't need to worry about those micro belts, those little tiny belt stubs that we hate oh so much, or at least I hate oh so much. And that's it. Now we got inputs and outputs connected and then we need power poles. Now power is a little weird on this one because the... Um, where even is it? Am I on the wrong side? No, yeah, it's right there. So the power is right there, and you can see that's completely surrounded by stuff. If I were to go in any direction, it's going to end up clipping. So what I did, and you can do it however you want. You could do floor power by connecting wall power outlets, you know, along the floor. Um, the problem is you can't put them directly into the blueprint designer's floor, so you'd have to put, you know, like a tiny metal beam and then you could do a wall outlet on top of that, but then it's not clipping through the floor, so it's a little painful. Um, I went with putting a painted beam. You put it behind the, the left corner here, right there. Why is it not letting me? There we go. And then you put it two meters tall. The one in the middle will put to four meters tall, and I will explain why that's the case. And two meters tall. 
and two meters tall. So then we'll go ahead and place our, and I'll do Mark 1s. Again, you can do Mark 2s. Uh, it'll work either way. And then when you connect them, they don't clip into, you know, they go above the, uh, Mark 2s go slightly better, but the, I did check at the top and they don't really clip into the buildings or into the mergers and splitters. So then we just connect the power pole to the building next to it and you're good to go. And again, I'll explain why this one's higher. It has to do with connecting, um, connecting the two to each other when we have the 8X design. So that's gonna be it for the 4X design. I've already taught you guys in the smelters video. There will be a link in the description to that, by the way, how to save your blueprints and modify those. So I'm not even going to um, show that example. And the tiling of these is the same as everything else in this series. You basically just put two of them next to each other. I will remove these pieces on the end like before. I just removed the wrong ones. Crap. <laughs> uh, I meant to remove the ones on this side. Whoops. So we'll uh, we'll load the blueprint of Constructors X4. And yeah, the ones you're supposed to remove are the one. It's easier when you have the jetpack and you can actually see the belts. You're not supposed to remove the ones that have the input coming in and the output going out. You want to remove the other side, kind of when the input has already passed all the buildings. So this is the side where you want to remove the conveyor poles and remove the output belts. And then when you put two of these next to each other, you just connect the merger and the splitter and the power pole across and you're good to go. But what I want to focus on is how do we convert this to an eight constructor build? Because that's what most of you are going to want to use. That's what I've been using in my base. Often you need a lot of constructors. So the first thing you do is you remove the lifts and we're going to remove the entire output belt here. And the reason for that is when you have the constructors facing each other, the output belt ends up needing to go in a different spot. So it actually will end up going right next to this one. You actually overlap the stackables a little bit. Personally, I'm okay with this because it looks like they're part of the same structure and it's not really clipping into that belt. Um, and then we take our other four constructors and we line them up just so that there's enough room to have a merger in between. Now you could space it out by one more like this so that they're really, you know, not clipping at all. I will warn you, if you do it this way, you're not saving any space at all and you're using the same amount of space as two of those in a row. So at that point, you might as well just use the 4X, two of the 4X ones instead of making an 8X. But you do end up saving space if you place them like this and you'll notice I have the merger facing towards the inside here and then we'll place our other four constructors now here's where things get a little weird this merger is not going to continue go oh you can't stand on that not going to continue uh, in the same direction this merger we actually want to point back towards the middle so these two are facing each other you can see the output here and the output here. And we're gonna do the same for these two constructors. We wanna make sure we rotate till the arrow's pointing towards the middle of these two. Now this one does have short stubby belt segments, I will warn you. So when you have to upgrade the mark of the blueprint, you'll probably have to deconstruct the mergers, upgrade the belts, and then reconstruct them. It's a little annoying, but given that you can use the blueprint for quite a while once you're at Mark three, and then once you're at Mark four, you should be okay. So those are all connected, I think. Did we connect this one? Uh-oh, I think I did. Sometimes you can get a little peek at the belt if you're at the right angle, but yeah. Usually I do it a bit more methodically to make sure I connected all of them. But you can kind of tell when you point at the edge of the merger you know, it's not snapping to anything else. If it had the open spots, it would be snapping to something else. Now, how do we get this output together? Well, you're going to have a merger that's going to face to the left, or I should say towards the input belt here between the other two mergers. And again, you'll do the same thing over here. The reason we're doing this, you might be like, 
Crydax. Why can't you just put all four mergers in a row? And then on the end, you have, oh, that's why you can't do it. Yeah, so you cannot fit, unfortunately, a vertical belt on the end, a lift, because it's just a little too big. I think you would need one more tile, maybe two. So you actually can't have them all coming the same direction. And there's really no other way to do it because you'd be clipping, you know, if you had each one facing this way and then the final one you turn around the other way, well, now you'd have two th vertical lifts in the same spot. So there's really no other way to do it that I could find that was perfectly dense with the constructors like this is. And this doesn't end up clipping very much at all. You'll see that there's a minor amount of clipping with the frame of the constructors, but for me, it's within my tolerance level. So then you go up two, four, to where it costs eight resources. And you'll notice it'll cost eight resources for two different uh, height levels. You want it to be at the higher of the two. That's the one that's always gonna line up with belts. And I also would like to get that output belt built. So uh, it's easiest to line this one up because remember that's the input and then this one is kind of overlapping with it slightly. And it's at a height of four. So this is gonna be our output belt that will be able to connect between builds. Again, the, an important part of this series is that it's tileable. There is minor clipping that, you know, the corner of this belt with the splitters, which again, it's up to you. If you, you could go one higher if you want to, or you could even go all the way to just going on top. If you'd prefer, you could just go on top of this belt. So a lot of it's personal preference. Uh, I kind of like when they're staggered personally. And then you'll notice, oh no, the merger, it's not snapping. I'm holding control and it's not snapping even though this lift is right next to it. So we'll use the trick I talked about in the smelters video. You actually plop a merger on the top of the conveyor lift. And then as you're holding control, you'll notice it snaps right there. It's on the belt, it snapped next to this merger and then we deconstruct the lift and deconstruct that dummy merger and now we can bring this lift up and you hear it snapping to that one. Again, there's a tiny bit of clipping with the frame of the constructors, but it's really not too bad. The little moving parts are mostly not messing with it. So to me, that works pretty well. And then you do need to make sure to connect the mergers to the middle merger here. So you've got constructors one, two, three, and four all going into this. And then again, you've got five, six, seven, eight, all going into this merger. And then you'll do the same strategy where you go to eight materials. When you do 10 materials, it's too much. Place it there, get a merger, snap on the belt. Um, that's not in the right spot. What is that snapping to, I wonder? I actually have no idea what that was snapping to. There we go. You construct these two. Oh, it might have been. It wasn't snapping to any of these, though. I don't know. I'm actually curious. There's the sound we want. And now you're good to go. So you've got all four of these constructors going to this lift, and all four of those constructors going to that lift. It all fits. It's tileable. You connect this to that part of the next blueprint. I do still like to deconstruct this part on the end. Because again, then when you place two of them in a row, you're just connecting this once, this once, and the power over. Now we do need to talk about the power. I haven't placed the power poles yet. We're gonna do them exactly the same as the other side. Oh, I also completely forgot. You know, I'm a little bit scatterbrained today. We need to do the inputs for these guys. It's pretty easy. You just raise them up two tiles. Um, sometimes it does that, I don't know why. It turns red and won't let you build it until you reselect it. But yeah, we already have the splitters. And we use the exact same splitters and we just go across the top of everything. So I do like to climb up for this. But it can be a little it can be a little tricky to uh, get in the right positioning for building these blueprints without the jetpack. But there you go. So those are the inputs for the other four constructors. I don't know uh, why I forgot to do that. Got a little scatterbrain today. And then we'll build the beams again behind the left corner. 
You want the four meter one to line up with the other four meter one, so that'll be this one. And then these are both two meters. There would be other ways to power this up. This is what I went with. I like this version. Oop, not a mark two pole. Mark one poles today. And then we connect these four, and you'll notice the two sides are unconnected. And that is what the extra tall one is for. Because this extra tall one, you'll notice there's a wall outlet there already. And so we connect the two wall outlets, and then we connect them to each other. And then that goes above and doesn't clip into anything. There are other options. Uh, if you don't have wall outlets, obviously you'll just have to connect above. So you could make these two slightly higher, maybe go five meters, and then connect the two in the middle to each other. Uh, you could go five or six meters for that, and they would go over the top of that belt. Because if you were to connect them right now, they clip through the belt. And even if you were to go one meter higher, I feel like it might clip through the output of the constructors if it was a taller item. And that is it. All of our power is connected. All of our inputs are connected and all of our outputs go to here. So this is a nice little eight constructor build. We'll go ahead and save it as example. Constructors X8, Mark IV. Goes into our examples category. And just like before with the smelters blueprint, if you want to connect two of them, you just make sure they're lined up. Like so. I don't know why sometimes it snaps nicely and sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, you'll see that there's a very close, you know, output here, but you can just hit those two and then you try to get this merger. You might need to climb the ladder for it. But you're getting this, whoa, this merger connected to that output belt. And then you're good to go with that. And then power, you can really connect any two. Uh, you could connect these two or those two. It's all gonna work. And then you're good to go. Right there, that's 16 constructors with, I don't know what that was, 10 clicks or something. It's pretty awesome. Highly recommend it. Saves you so much time connecting everything. And then, you know, all you need to do is, if you wanna make a billion concrete, you put your limestone in there and you get your concrete out there. Nice and clean, belts are off the floor so you can traverse your factory easily. So there you go, there's your 8x constructors blueprint. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I'll see you in the next blueprint video.